What is up Geek fans, it's Gibson here. Today I'm going to be walking you guys through how to build a small form factor PC for your living room. It's going to be within the range of $1,000 as well. We're going to start from building this thing from the scratch and then setting this thing up so it can maybe be properly used inside your living room. Without further ado, let's dive in. We're going to build our Intel Arc B580 PC inside this NCXT H1 case which I think the aesthetic fits the living room perfectly. We're going to start by removing the side panels and then remove the top panel to reveal the included spare parts inside. We're going to need these parts later in the video. Now I want to start by removing the stock power supply included inside the case. This power supply is the custom 650 watts that is not too difficult to replace. Now we're going to unscrew these parts that secure the hinge of the radiator for the AIO which will allow us to continue to remove the cables from the power supply. These cables are quite a tight fit so we want to take it easy. Now after the motherboard cable is removed, we just need to cut these two zip ties to remove our last two cables from the PSU. And now our first step is completed. Next we want to remove the screws that hold the power supply in place. We're going to start by removing the screws in the back to remove the SSD tray. Now coming back to the front we want to remove these two screws. Also we want to remove the two screws at the top of the case. And then these should be the last two screws that secure the power supply cage inside the case which will allow us to remove the power supply out of the case and for the record this 650 watts power supplies is actually sufficient for our today's build but replacing the power supply early on will make sure that the future upgrade is easy we're going to be using ROG Logi 850 watts uh, SFXL PSU Surprisingly, this power supply has the exact same dimensions as a stock NCXC power supply. So that's the main reason why I'm using it. Now comparing them side by side, it's almost as if the RG Loki was purposefully made to fit inside the NCXT H1 due to its size. And now we're just going to repeat the steps in reverse to reinstall the power supply back into the case. And as you can see, it fits perfectly inside the case. Next, we're going to be looking at the replacement riser cable included inside my package. The NCXT H1 was known to have fire hazard. That's why they have included this replacement riser cable in my package. As you can see, the original riser cable has these uh, drilled up holes compared to the new replacement one, which looks much cleaner. Next, we're going to pre-connect these power supply cables. This will make it much easier afterwards when we connect the components to the power supply afterwards given the tight space we have here inside the small form factor case. We're going to be using the Intel Core i5-14400F which should run at decent temperature inside our case. And we're going to be using Kingston NV2 M.2 SSD with 2TB of storage. And we're going to connect them all with this MSI MPG B760i which is a mini ITX motherboard. Now let's unpack the CPU and start installation. Now the CPU is installed. Next we're going to install the SSD. We're going to start by removing the two screws on the SSD heatsink so we can have an access to the SSD slot on the motherboard. Now we're going to secure the SSD in place with the included screw 
inside the motherboard's box. Securing the heatsink back on. And now we're going to install the motherboard inside the case. So let's get this AIO cooler out of the way for now. And now we're going to slowly insert the motherboard from the bottom into the case. And we're going to secure the motherboard onto the case. And next we're going to connect the fan and the pump and also the front I.O. onto the motherboard. Now with that out of the way, let's install our Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR5 RAM onto our motherboard. And now we're going to flip our case onto its side so we can install this CPU cooler standoff onto the back of the case. And now we're going to screw in the thumb screw standoffs onto the front of the motherboard. So we can install our AIO onto the CPU. Now we are securing the AIO using the X pattern to make sure that the pressure is evenly spread onto the CPU. And now it's time for our protagonist, the Intel Arc B580. I really like the design of the GPU and its size should fit any small form factor cases out there. The GPU only requires one PCIe power cable to work. And now we can install our last component into the case. And since we're not going to use the extra PCIe power cable, I'm just going to tuck it away for now. And that should be the final touch of our today's build. So let's fire this thing up and see how it performs. One of the first issues I had right away for using this Windows PC inside my living room was the lack of TV console to put it on. I addressed this issue using this custom made acrylic riser that fits the size of the PC case perfectly. And it's almost inevitable to use mouse and keyboard to navigate the Windows UI. If you want to stick to the full size mouse and keyboard that's also fine. The Logitech MX series are easy recommendations since the battery will last for months which is perfect for our use. But using something of this size much more ideal. This is a G60S Pro Air mouse. It is basically both a mouse and a keyboard in a tiny TV remote form factor. It's perfect for a living room PC like the one we built. Now every time you boot up a PC you usually will have to input the password to sign in. But we want to be able to just boot up the PC and enjoy the gaming session without this getting in the way. And we can do just that. We're gonna automate the Windows lock-on process so that the PC will boot right into the Steam Big Picture mode. Which is very ideal for a living room PC like this one. And we're gonna do it via window registry so there's no third party apps required. Now before we begin we want to make sure that we are on our local account. Open up settings, then go into accounts. Then go into your info and here you want to make sure to click sign in with a local account instead if you're not already on a local account. Next you want to download this file from the link in the video description. Right click on the file and select edit in notepad. Here you want to change the details here to what corresponds to your PC. In case you're not sure about your username or your PC name, we can open up the command prompt then type in who am I and press enter. What comes before the slash is going to be your PC name and what comes after is the username. You can just copy and paste these into the registry file. 
And lastly, you just want to replace your password here. Then you want to save and close the file. Then run the file only once. And now we should be good to go. And don't forget to come into your Steam settings and make sure to tick the Start Steam in Big Picture mode when the Windows start. This will make sure that when your PC boots up, it will go right into the Steam Big Picture mode. The Intel Arc V580 is a powerful enough GPU that can run any game in 1440p in high settings. Just don't expect to max out the settings in the latest AAA titles. It does pack a punch for its size when it comes to ray tracing, so you can expect to play games with ray tracing on, though you might need to tweak the settings just a bit. Let's take a look at the gaming performance metrics. The B580 can run Cyberpunk 2077 at the RT Ultra preset with very decent FPS when frame generation is enabled. With a mid-range GPU like this, it's essential to leverage both image upscaling and frame generation to maximize performance. And thanks to its 12 GB of VRAM, it also handles Indiana Jones and the Great Circle at high settings with solid frame rates. These results make it clear that the GPU is more than capable of delivering smooth gameplay at 1440p in most modern titles. Temperatures are well within a safe range too, with the CPU averaging in the mid-50s and the GPU staying in the low 70s during gaming sessions. That's pretty much it for this build. I've added links to all the parts I used down in the description. And just so you know, some of them are affiliate links, which means I might earn a small commission if you decide to pick something up. It won't cost you anything extra, but it really helps support the channel, so thank you. However, the NCXT H1 has been released since 2019 and it pretty much went extinct by now, so it would be difficult to find one in the market right now. So what's the next best thing? I do recommend the SSUPD Mesh Room. It has a very similar design to this NCXT H1. It's going to be very similar in terms of how to build your PC inside it. And that's about it guys. I hope you guys like the video. If you do, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you geeks in the next one. Peace out guys.